All right, folks, this is a Freestyle Liber 2 sensor. Um, I've got my hands on one because uh, it's interesting to see the electronics. Let me explain to some of you what this is in case you're not sure. It's a continuous glucose monitoring system or it says flash glucose monitoring system. Basically what that means is there's a little sensor, this little round thing here, this disc gets inserted onto your uh, body uh, there's a needle on the inside. We're going to see that later. It's You basically attach it to your skin, and it sits there for approximately two weeks measuring your glucose, your uh, interstitial glucose, because it's not going into a blood vessel, just into the skin. Um, and it's picking up glucose within the fluids in your skin, and you read it with a, with a, um, a device that you basically scan over this thing, and it picks up the readings. So I just want to show you the delivery system. This has already been used, but I can show you how it works. So there's two components, okay? The sensor is actually on this thing. Apparently they're matched with some kind of uh, code here. I'm not sure why, but they're matched up, okay? This is normally covered with a sticky uh, film because that's the sensor right here. We're gonna look into that later. I'll just zoom in here for a second so you can see. Um, okay, and so this is usually covered with a sticky material. And what happens is you put it into this thing to pick up the needle. It picks up the needle and inserts into there. And then you stop, you uh, stick it onto the skin. Uh, and those ports there, those three contacts apparently are the electrode, uh, you know, they somehow pick up the information from the needle. So let's have a look and see. I'm going to zoom out again. Okay, this is the device that holds the needle. Okay, so I'm going to just zoom into that as well. And uh, you'll see at the base there, it's hard to tell, there's something inside. And this is flush. Now after you use it, it goes down. So what, what ends up happening is you take this device here, and you line up the marks. There's a mark uh, here and a mark there. You see that line there and there. And they go together like this, okay? And then when you pick it up, you have now the device with the needle. Now, I've attached a small, um, I don't know if you can see that, it's a toothpick, okay? That's just a toothpick. Sorry, it's blurry. But here, I'll zoom in just so you can see. There used to be a needle on there, but I didn't want to poke myself. So let's take this out for a second. Sorry, take the needle out. Okay, that's a toothpick. I'll leave it there. And then what you're supposed to do is apply it to your body. So imagine needle sticking out. You do this, and then you let go. Remember, there's supposed to be a sticky material here, so it sticks to your skin. And then it comes off and now it's stuck to you with the needle, you know, stabbed into your skin. Okay. So really this thing is just a, a one-time use device that picks up the needle. It's just for safety. Um, there's, there used to be little catches here, so I can bring it back up by just uh, doing that. But there's a thing there and the needle was housed inside there. And when you apply this thing, you basically push that down and the needle component gets uh, in attached to this end. So that's this little guy here. Okay, so I managed to pull one of these guys apart and essentially this is going down at the base there and this is on top and it's basically, yeah, like this. Okay, but the other side's interesting. I pulled this one apart, there's the other one. There's a spring inside here and this. Now, I believe what ends up happening is um, that spring is there because it's spring loaded and you can see there's a needle there inside. So what I didn't realize is actually, I think that's the working end that actually punctures into the skin. So when you apply this for the first time, I believe that spring loaded mechanism sits there and it jabs the needle in. It somehow goes through the center of the entire sensor. Because there's a hole right through that. 
a hole through the board and there's also a hole through this end here. So that actually punctures through and then starts the process. And then um, I believe what's left in the skin is just a small uh, electrode that sits there. So that I believe is the actual needle. You can see it right in there, deep inside. So yeah, I think that's it there. Otherwise there's, I see no reason for this very sharp metal needle to be in this portion. And definitely what was inside of the sensor in that part was not metal. It was part of that plastic, uh, almost like a flat flex that you see in there. That's what was uh, inserted in the skin. So I guess that's not what actually punctures the skin. This mechanism does it for you and then retracts and then leaves the sensor inside. Okay, so let's have a look at that component. We'll see if I can open it up. Okay, so inside of here, let me get this thing out somehow without uh, having it fly across the room like happened last time. Come on, there. Okay, so if you look carefully here, the needle, remember there, there was a needle sticking out here, something like that, okay? And you can see the rest of it here. Again, it's hard to tell because, uh, you know, this, I can't really zoom in that well with this camera there. Okay, if you look carefully, you can see that little plastic thing there, okay? Right at the base, okay, this tube. You see that? That's the end of the needle, this thing here. See that little plastic black thing right here? I'm gonna see if I can pry it out. See, right there, I have it under the toothpick. So you might be able to see that. Okay, that little tube, plastic thing that you see there was working its way up and through here. And that was what was going in the skin. Now, how do these work? Uh, from what I've read, the, there's an enzyme that somehow is able to recognize glucose. And when it uh, reacts with the glucose, it produces peroxide radicals and the peroxide, hydrogen peroxide radicals, I think then in turn react with some metal uh, within the electrodes here and they produce some kind of uh, current. And so that's basically what's going on. And these, so these three contact points here, remember they mate with that area there, right? Cause it goes flat like this. Okay. So let's see if we can open up the actual sensor. You'll notice that there's a battery in there. These things last two weeks and let's see what's inside one of these things. Now how to pry it open is a good question. Okay. I'm going to grab a, um, we'll focus on that. I'm going to grab a tool to see if I can open it up. Okay, everyone. So I managed to get the top office, this thing, uh, keep in mind that they are designed to be waterproof because they're supposed to be worn for about two weeks while this battery lasts. And, um, so it all is encased here, pretty watertight. So that is the board. Um, so it looks like there's a lot more going on here than I initially thought. Um, you can see here, there's some kind of a package, which uh, we'll see if we can get an image here of this thing. Um, maybe I'll be able to, to read what that is later, um, at the, if we get it at the right angle. Okay, there, I think we got pet potentially Sorry, I'm trying to look at this thing close up. Um, I 
maybe in the light here. Oh, that might work better. There we go. I see something. RF 430TAL160HTI 478APC4C. So that might be the RF chip, I'm assuming, by Texas Instruments. I'm going to put a link or at least a description in the video if we can figure out what that chip is. And then below it, there's another really tiny one, but I can't make out what it says. And then we flip the other guy around here. And so it seems to say, um, E M nine three oh four oh two four W seven W three and there uh, is that a clock forty eight megahertz uh chip up above it maybe for the ch CPU um E M is that an M EM 9304-024-W7-M3. That's what I think it says. And here's another clear view of the, uh, the microprocessor here. Uh, come on. Focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay, I don't know if there's anything on the back of this thing. I highly doubt it because it's pretty flat and it looks like it's sandwiched right up against the case, plastic case. So I'm pretty sure it's one-sided pretty much, but there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video, um, tearing apart and figuring out how this glucose monitor system works, at least the mechanics of it and a little bit about the components and then remember this has a sticky surface on it you apply it to the skin and there it goes for two weeks running on this little coin cell battery it picks up the readings um, i'm sure they could make it last longer but the whole point of it is uh maybe due to a risk of infection or even the um, the agents and the enzymes in this thing running out it just can't be used longer than two weeks because it's going to have a limited reaction time, right? There's only so much chemical um, reaction that this thing can undergo, at least within uh, tolerance of specifications. You don't want to let it get too low because then uh, the reading probably starts becoming off calibration. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this quick teardown of the Freestyle Liber 2 flash glucose monitoring system sensor. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.